Chess friends, Ramesh Babu Pragnanandha, is remarkable super grandmaster who achieved the prestigious title of chess grandmaster at the astonishing age of 12. Today I will show you the one of the most incredible chess games played between him and Magnus Carlsen, who is the number one chess player in the world. Prague started the game with the e4, leading us into a closed Sicilian defense following the traditional line. At this point he had the option to play a chess gambit by advancing with knight to e2. Let me show you the variation, Prague considered advancing his d-pawn anticipating potential knight exchanges on d4, so knight b5, targeting the pawn, in response the best move was to play e5, subsequently white's queen moved, to h5, applying pressure on both the f-pawn and e-pawn, black will play d6 and white will continue to develop the bishop with a menacing intent. So g6 queen f3 to target the f-pawn, you may play knight f6 then white will sacrifice the knight on c7 and black would need to capture it, this sequence of moves could potentially lead to a position where white's queen takes the knight, putting the rook in black's camp under threat, however in our actual game, Prague initiated with the traditional move bishop b5, extending an invitation to black to consider knight d4, we have knight f3 and black's e6. A move aimed at safeguarding the light squares while somewhat passive for the light squared bishop, it became evident that Magnus had no intentions of capturing the bishop anymore, following this after black castled, a6 and the bishop gracefully retreated, this phase of the game resembled a lively dance of knights and bishops at the chessboard bar, the 18-year-old chess prodigy Prague unleashed a strategic move b3, unveiling a plan to deploy his bishop to b2. Followed by e5 knight e4 knight g5 and then a daring queen leap to h5, the objective was clear, target the vulnerable f7 square on black's kingside, so g6, Prague will play queen to h5, intensifying the pressure on f7, black countered with queen to e7 but Prague persisted with knight d6 check supported by the menacing e5 pawn, this critical position will be on the brink of strategic destruction, so in this position we have d6 to protect that square, bishop b2 knight f6 rook e1. Magnus faced a crucial decision like choosing between cake and broccoli, he could have gone for the daring knight to d7 plan, plotting a spectacular g5 g4 assault, but he decided to stick with the king's Indian diet and played a straightforward g6, Prague decided to play e5, saying to the pawn, move over buddy. I need some space for my rook to stretch its legs, my bishop and knight to throw a party, and my dark bishop to finally join the action, so after doing big exchanges on center we have bishop g7, Pragnanandha had an opportunity to choreograph a chess masterpiece with moves like queen f3 rook e3 knight a4. Setting the stage for a grand performance, instead he went for the drama of rook takes pawn, as if his rook had ambitions to become a Hollywood star in a chess soap opera, truly a scene stealer, this comedy rook move gives black two extra knight move to achieve a good position with a rook target, here you shouldn't save the rook because white have the d3 weakness by the knight and queen, and the bishop line will be open, for that reason we have amazing knight e2 move. To deliver the punchline and pin the knight to the bishop, Magnus the stockfish subscriber, went for the unexpected knight f3 check, sacrificing his knight with flair to capture the bishop and doubled up the f pawns, creating weaknesses on g file, couple of moves later we have castle, Magnus had a strategy that sounded more like a recipe for chess stew. He wanted to push the f and e pawns by sliding his king around, making b5 a potential guest star for the bishop's party on b7, then cue the drama with queen g5, it was like the opening act to use the g-file for some serious action scenes, but the real showstopper was bishop h3, creating a hypothetical white nightmare on g2, as if it was saying, checkmate, anyone. And with bishop e5, it was like Magnus ordered a pizza and asked, could you add some h-pawn toppings just in case. So we have rook e4 bishop e7, threatening to play queen g5 check bishop c6 threat on this diagonal, so rook e3 with the idea of playing f4 to protect that square, bishop e4 is a strong move to protect the light square diagonal. Chess is a blend of art and science where every move tells a story on the 64 square canvas of strategy and imagination, said by Magnus Carlsen, in this position if you give black two extra moves, for example rook c1, then black will respond with queen h4 and bishop h3, and it's as if they've just unleashed the jesters of the board, this mischievous bishop and queen duo are causing mayhem, while the king contemplates its destiny with that queen g2 checkmate sign looming large. 
Meanwhile the knight faces a precarious situation like a tightrope, Walker navigating a sea of pawns, trying not to stumble into the clown pit, so back to the position, we have c4 queen h4 to play bishop h3, Prague played bishop d5, Magnus realizing that playing bishop h3 wouldn't yield any benefits due to f4 with the rook safeguarding the rank, instead he opted for a brilliant king move, intending to follow up with f4 to target the rook. This setup would allow bishop h3 to come into play with a queen check, importantly the knight couldn't block on g3 as it would be vulnerable to capture by the f4 pawn, so we have queen e1, f5 king h8 b6 knight c3, Prague seemed ready to offer his rook as a chess sacrifice, let me show you the variation, if a5, then he will sacrifice the rook, queen takes e5 check leading to a queen exchange party, black might end up material rich but the white pawns were like the giants of the chessboard. It's like a tale of pawns and knight. Living happily ever after in their little fortress, chess where even rooks can have a day off, so back to the position, we have rook e8 to protect the pawn, in Magnus's mind, it's like he's planning a chess revolution, if you play some 200 elo Gotham chess moves, then Magnus will unleash the army with an e4 move, declaring, time to open the rook file, but we'll start with a pawn appetizer, as the plot thickens, f4 enters the stage, like a dramatic entrance for the bishop and when that pawn gets captured. It's as if the rook on f3 shouts, I need a break. Rook e3 and the bishop e5 says, I've got a date with destiny, checkmate in one move, but the real showstopper is queen g1 as if it's saying, don't mind me I'm just here to watch the fireworks, and then, the killer move arrives, bishop h3, threatening bishop g2 check, like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat, white has to sacrifice the rook on f3 and the position. Well, it will be dead lost position for prgg, so back to the current position, we have queen g1, queen g3 may come so Magnus responded with bishop h6, targeting to the rook, rook can't go back because of bishop takes d2 and white will lose the knight, if you play rook d3, let me show you the variation, then bishop f4 will come to make pressure, before e4, in a twist of chess fate the position might seem all fine and dandy for white after some pawn exchanges on e4. But here comes the superstar move rook takes bishop, like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a bishop shaped hat, knight takes rook, makes its grand entrance and everyone's in shock. But wait there's more. Get ready for the ultimate sacrifice, bishop takes pawn as if saying, I'm going all in, folks and the punchline. Queen takes knight check, the king goes, I'm going to hide here, and boom. Queen takes rook, Magnus is left with just one piece and that's enough to win the game, but in our actual game, we have b5 to make some gameplay in queenside, we have bishop rook exchanges, f4, threatening to push the g-pawn to g4 to capture it with bishop, play e4 with rook support then bishop f3 check, Prague is a stockfish subscriber too, so he knows how to counter, he takes the pawn, and after some moves later we have queen d2, threatening to take the knight and play bishop h3, we have knight e4 queen d3. Since white have no bodyguards he is going to destroy it critically, look at the pieces combination of Magnus, a couple of moves later, we have bishop takes pawn with the idea of playing queen check with queen exchange offer, black will completely win the game because he have a rook for bishop. So wish you all the best thanks for watching subscribe for more bye bye take care see you soon.